Hey folks, welcome back. Mark here with Doug and the new Taycan GTS. This wonderful example here is available as of recording. Uh, that might change a little later on today when this movie comes out. A uh, couple of things we want to highlight on the exterior that are now standard. Uh, first and foremost that we see right here is the standard sport design front arrow kit that goes all the way around. Uh, really cool, the uh, details here on the side in high gloss black. Obviously the new wheel design uh, only on the Taycan GTS. We got the wonderful GTS logo here in satin on the side, printed into the high gloss black. Super cool little touch. Uh, clear tail lights, obviously, and Taycan GTS on the back. Uh, the rear of the car also in high gloss black. Uh, Duck will take you through the interior. So a couple options uh, this car has. Uh, you've got the full leather interior um, as with any other GTS model. You've got the Alcantara roof. This vehicle is equipped with the uh, tech and premium package. So you've got your heads up display. Uh, you've got the passenger display, which is very cool. Uh, your night vision assist, your adaptive cruise control. Um, a little personal favorite of mine. You've got the power charge port covers, uh, which are always cool, no matter which Taycan model. Uh, surround view camera for not navigating tight spots. Um, like with any other premium package, you got your heated and ventilated seats, uh, panoramic uh, roof, um, and um, the Bose surround sound system. So if you guys have any questions about this vehicle, you can message either me or Mark on Instagram. And we're happy to help you out with the purchase of this car. Uh, the one cool thing is that this was built by Porsche and it's more of a techie built. So we also have the heads up display, adaptive cruise control. Um, yeah, you mentioned everything else. So pretty cool. Let's jump in and take it for a spin. Launch control in the Taycan GTS. Oh, that's snazzy. Not as fast, obviously, as a turbo or turbo S, but I think that's more than plenty. <laughs> Still throwing me back in the seat. Yeah. I like that. I think you can do that multiple times without getting sick. <laughs> There's only one way to find out. <laughs> yeah, let's not. Uh, I mean, these cars are crazy fast. Uh, you know, we've done uh, drives, uh, driving impressions with uh, a couple other Taycan variants. They all have that instant torque, the instant pickup. Um, you know, the essentially what the launch control does is it actually neuters the power for just a split second. Uh, it also does start you out in the first of two gears so that uh, you can put down a little bit more torque. And, over the over the course of about a split second, um, you will uh, it feeds in the rest of the power um, so that you don't lose traction and you pretty much accelerate as efficiently as possible. Um, for the geeks under us, uh, just so that we mentioned that as well, the front motor is equivalent to the front motor of the Taycan 4S. The rear motor is equivalent of the Taycan Turbo. Uh, same motor as the Turbo S, but the power delivery of the Turbo. Uh, and that's where the GTS is a little bit more power. With that being said, it's also a little bit more rear biased in terms of where the power goes to. Yeah, Porsche has tweaked um, a couple uh, interesting things with this car. You know, as with any uh, of the other GTS models, uh, when Porsche breathes on it, they put some, uh, uh, accentuate some, some of the special features, uh, like the, any other GTS, the suspension. Uh, you get the nice, tight suspension, you know, while not being uncomfortable. Um, super, super responsive. Um, they do tune the steering a little bit. Um, they, do you feel the difference? A little bit, yeah. Um, I mean, we are in Sport Plus mode right now, so, um, you know, that's that always makes the steering a little bit uh, heavier. Um, the sound probably doesn't come through on the audio here. Uh, but they gave the, the electric sports sound, which I already thought was so neat. Um, they gave it a little bit more growl, a little more grunt, a little more... Sounds a little bit more meaty. Gra 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 more gravelly, I would say. Yeah. Um, not necessarily deeper. Uh, gravelly is a good way to put it. But uh, um, just, you know, like 
like again with any other GTS, they put that they give it that GTS sound uh, in the exhaust. It might not be the fastest model Porsche makes, um, but it's the driver oriented one. So you know you want the sound, uh, you want the feel, the steering, the acceleration, uh, and this car really does have it all. Um, you know the exterior sound uh, is going to be the same as the other Taycans and. Um, you know, there's you know, of course going to be people out there that want their internal combustion engine sounds. I think this the, the sound that this makes makes me just as happy in the cabin. While I'm I mean, for the it. people that want to hear the exhaust sound, like I don't view this as something that I well, you could, but that I would take out on a weekend for a spirited drive, a long spirited drive, I should say. I view this more as your daily commuter car that is a blast to drive, eco friendly where on a daily drive, I usually listen to music, maybe a podcast. Uh, some people probably listen to an audio book uh, and you don't need engine sound. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. I, I mean, it, like I, I like to hear something and I like the fact that it, that the sound, whether it be in the Taycan, Taycan 4S, Taycan GTS, it's throttle dependent. So it does, um, give you the sensation when you get on and off the throttle um, of driving a normal car. So uh, with that being said, let's uh, switch seats. So with that switch, um, my turn to drive and see uh, how this feel. Uh, Doug, you looked at the build sheet. Um, no rear axle steer on this? No. Tycon already has a pretty short wheelbase, a um, little slightly longer than that of a 911, uh, slightly shorter than a Panamera. Correct. Um, so it's it's already pretty spry. You can feel the front end loading up slightly different, a uh, little more feel, a little more weight to it too than any other Tycon. So with that, I mean, you feel the resistance of the steering wheel more when you put it through a turn. So um, gives you a better gauge of what's going on in the front end. Obviously, you know, that's what the GTS models are known for, to have that enforced steering feel to help you navigate whatever the roads might throw at you. Very comfortable seat, 18-way seat in this car. Feels like a bucket, but doesn't grab you that you almost feel claustrophobic. I, I've always been a huge proponent of the 18-way seat um, on a on a you know long trip. You spread out the bolsters. Uh, feels like you're sitting on a sofa. Uh, some some of us call it the sofa seat. Um, but then for that spirited Sunday drive. You tighten it up, and like Mark said, it feels almost like a bucket, just easier to get in and out of. Yeah. Um, I, well, you noticed something funny when I opened the door. I don't know if this is new or not. I haven't noticed it until today. Um, so it could be unique to this car or maybe just the 2022 model year. Um, when you open the door um, as part of the comfort access, if the bolsters are all the way in, they will come out a little bit uh, to make it the I think that's ingre I ingress think that's very neat. That's very neat. It is. That's, uh, that's something small that most people will look over. Um, something I also noticed, not, I'm wearing polarized glasses and these are pretty terrible in terms of what you can see in terms of reflections. Um, other cars, I cannot see the heads up display. In this car, if I tilt my head like this, then I see it bright. I can still see the information, not as bright as it's projected, but I can still see the information. So it's not, um, it, it's a good quality heads up display that does not get destroyed with your polarized glass, which is good to know. Yeah. I like that. I noticed it too, um, that it, you know, again, wearing polarized sunglasses, I was able to see it, but it wasn't distracting. I'm generally, I'm not a huge fan of the um, heads up display because I, I personally find it distracting. Um, I'm, however, a huge fan of the um, passenger display, um, you know, especially in a car like a Taycan 4S, GTS, um, I think it's a little turbo. overkill on a rear wheel drive. Like the, the price, for the price of the car, I think it's a little too much. 
Well, it depends on what you're getting the car for. Uh, if you're, if if you want like a four door sports sedan um, that you can really flick around, the Taycan rear wheel drive is certainly not a bad option. Um, but uh, <laughs> S curve is always fun. It's a little wet, especially you know with a little uh, moisture on the road. <laughs> Handles are just absolutely fine. <laughs> Very predictable road behavior. That's, I'm impressed more so than with the- uh, Wish I could say the same for you. Uh, that's 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 so kind of you. Um, no, I'm, I'm impressed with the uh, the road handling of the car. Um, yeah, I mean, it really does handle incredibly. Um, I probably mentioned in one of the previous Taycan videos, um, lower center of gravity than 911, super low to the ground. Um, you're, your bottom is actually sitting on the line that connects uh, the center of the wheels. Uh, so it's almost the seating position, uh, that of the Cayman. It's it's a low. I, I, low yeah, car. that's a, that's a, you mentioned that, but this feels very much in terms of where the, the, the shifting or the, the turning point of the cars to a Cayman. I never really thought of it that way, but yes, it's, it's very similar to that. So a lot of people wanted to think of this as an electric Panamera and but frankly it it does handle way closer to that of a, a larger Cayman. Larger Cayman with the power of a 911, the center of gravity lower than the 911. What's not to love? More space than a 911. I mean if you're realistically who out there travels more than 200 miles a day? Yeah, I mean, I, I've got a pretty hefty commute. I live uh, I live in Denville, commute up to Upper Saddle River. Um, I could live with, you know, an electric car. Um, it's, I probably do 90 miles a day. Uh, and that's not counting running errands. So, um, you know, that's not even half. And look at the drive. We're, so this coming Sunday, we're doing a drive, which is, and I calculated this from the Electrify America station in next to the Garden State Plaza Mall, to the Electrify America Station, East Strasbourg. And now we're going over Port Jarvis, uh, doing a substantial drive. It's about 170 mile-ish from point A to point B. You can make it, you can drive a little spirited here and there. The main thing you probably wanna do is like, just keep the pace instead of like doing a lot of acceleration and down, you know, you wanna keep it a little bit even, but you should be easy to make it um, putting it in range here and there, you know, if you're stuck in traffic, just switching your drive modes, but you should be able to have fun all day. Um, the, the range, like any of the other Taycan models, is, uh, is very conservative. Um, you know, your PCM is going to tell you, you're going to have, you know, just 200 and change. Um, but really, even having a little bit of fun, you should see way closer to 300 miles uh, so with performance battery, which this does come, performance battery plus, which this does come standard with. For a reference, so we're driving in Sport Plus. We've driven now, uh, what, this is probably, we're on mile six, seven? Uh, six. Yeah, we're driving a little spirited. So we have 189 miles left of electrons. Again, we're in Sport Plus. If I flick this back to range mode, that jumps up to 209 miles. Now range mode cuts off the rear engine. It's only the front when you're at speed. If you need to accelerate, then sure, the, the back will still help. But other than that, you just use the front motors and the rear motor gets completely just neutralized almost, if you will. I lost my passenger display. I'm sorry, it, the As part of range mode, it will cut off the passenger display. It neuters the uh, rear, AC, rear, rear AC, passenger AC. It directs it mostly on the driver. Um, I believe it also cuts out a couple of the speakers in the car, depending on whether or not you have Bose or Burmester. And if you um, get really low, then it really starts to take back power from you, even if you want to go, just so you can make it to your destination. If you, that's a nasty scratch on that car. If you do make it a little bit further, if you do come to a complete stop, you can always still get the, um, push the power button and, and get like, get off the lane, I think essentially what it is. We've never tried it, we've never gotten a car that low, uh, but I think you press and hold the on off button after the car has died and you can start it up and drive off the lane. But that's that's kind of it, so. Um, we made it back. Car is still in one piece, we're still in one piece. Uh, and this car is available. We don't know how long, 
But uh, do contact Doug or myself, and we're happy to give you uh, more information on the car, send you the full build sheet, or even uh, have you come over for a test drive. So uh, get in touch, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, guys. You all.